depending on the situation, you may or may not have to clear the pool because it might impact other people. So, so if it's from that perspective, bit, the more solid, the better. Out. Scoop it out. Everyone carries on. But if you've got a total punami on your hands, <laughs> you're, then you're, you're just there on the mic. The pool. Um, excuse me. We've got a code <laughs> brown. There's a code brown. Our guest today is Emma, and she's here to talk about being a lifeguard. A guardian of life, g- guarding the life of people. What? Guarding, guarding a lifeguard. Uh, sorry. Hello, Emma. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Nice to see you. Yeah, nice. Really nice to meet you. I'm, I'm just confused. Now that I've said it out loud and read what's written down, everyone knows, or most people know, what a lifeguard is. Yeah? Is that right? I hope so. T- Tom, what's a lifeguard? Someone who works in a swimming pool on a beach, keeping an eye on f- for people who aren't very good swimmers. Okay, Emma, is that a decent yeah, would summary say of so. it? Yeah. But where in that lifeguard title does it mention water? That's that's too general for me. Like it should be, I'm a I'm a water lifeguard, or I'm a lifeguard of I'm a guardian of the water. Waves. That's nice. That guarding nice. the waterways is really nice. Yeah. Because that life, you could be guarding someone's life out of the water <laughs> on well, land. Well, you've got to keep an eye on them on the poolside and on the beach as well. So I guess it's not just in the water. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it is like more general. Okay, right. Lifeguard. Your slow motion running is good. Were you holding a red float under one arm? Boop. With it across your chest. Choo oh. choo. Yeah. Choo choo. Did the did the men wear red shorts as well? Yes. yes. Did they wear were they meant to wear the yellow t shirts and for T V viewing purposes not wear a t shirt? I think so, yeah. But that's why I don't think lifeguarding needs any explanation because everybody's going to know what you mean just from the theme tune and that's why everybody knows what a lifeguard is without any more explanation, I think. So how close is, is Baywatch actually to you see, real This life? is exactly where I thought it was going to go. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that just, well, that is real life? It's the same way like Holby City and ER to me. That's how hospitals are, isn't it? <laughs> well, I would say that in the pools... The male lifeguards do not run around with their tops off. And also, they wouldn't be running on poolside because they'd, you know, be asked not to. It'd be dangerous. Trip Have hazard. you got to keep your top on? Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> male and female. Um, and you're going in the pool if you're making a rescue in exactly what you're wearing whilst you're sitting on the chair as well. So, if you're in shorts, T-shirt, that's what you're going in the water in. So, the minimal, the better then? Well, it depends, you see, because if you're outdoor lifeguarding and it's in the winter and you've got a tracksuit on, oh. then you're going in in your tracksuit. Really? So they have to do their, the they have to do their training um, in the kit that they're wearing, so that they know they're trained to rescue in 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 what they wear on a regular basis. My fear here, Joe, is that if you were to try and rescue someone in like full winter garb, very quickly you'd have a double rescue situation on your hands. That is, that is a very real fear. My my biggest fear with that would be, you know, you, you've seen the clobber that I wear, mate. It's fucking, you know what I mean? It's, it's high-end stuff. A bit cheeky. What? A bit cheeky gear. A little bit, you know what I mean? It's legit. So my fear is if I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there, poolside, sipping on some gin and juice. Oh. <laughs> Sipping on some gin and juice. <laughs> Who the fuck am I, Coolio? Oh god! <laughs> and then I'm like, oh god, I've got to go rescue someone. I'm like, oh, god, I've got this tracksuit on. I'm so you have to put your tracksuit before the life of a drowning person. No, I would just put the time. Okay. Into taking it off, <laughs> no, holding you, it. You've got 20 seconds to react to get in the water. So. Right, Joe. See so if you can take your tracksuit off in 20 seconds. Let me get my phone. I'll see if you can do it. Fuck's going on here then? Like. <laughs> Emma, no, can you make the noises of someone in distress? No, in thank the pool? you. No, thank you. <laughs> Listen, you've already shown Emma your backside when she arrived at the studio. Did I? This is or true. did Emma actually I was walk invited in, on, on I was the, invited in the room in. where I was meant to be changing? Do you think you, if, if you were to zip up your tracksuit, do you reckon you could take off your trainers and your tracksuit in the 20 seconds that you've got? Mate, it took me half hour to get it all on. 
It's not a chance I've got 20 seconds to get it on. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Lifeguarding is a proper, forgive me for my potentially insensitive and stupid question, but you're going to get a lot of them. Lifeguarding's a real, like, career, is it? Like, I always just pictured a lifeguard as, like, a summer job, someone in between college and university or just, oh, yeah, I'll do it at the weekends or something. Lifeguarding is a proper proper job? I think it can be any of those things. I think it's a really good stepping stone job. It's A lot of the time, it's the first thing people do that when they come to work in leisure. So you might start as a lifeguard and then go on to swimming teaching or go into management in leisure centres. But you're right, it's also a really good job to have for in between like school holidays, some holidays, if you're travelling, that kind of thing. So once you've got the qualification, it's it's recognised. So, yeah, it is, it's a good opportunity from that point of view. There are certain jobs, Emma, where the thing that you don't want to happen because it's a bad thing is also strangely a thing you want to happen because it's the reason you do the job. <laughs> so I look at lifeguards and I think most of it looks really boring. Like if I'm going up and down Nutsford Leisure Centre, the lifeguards just sitting there in their nice tall chair, nothing's happening. If I was that lifeguard, a very small part of me would be going, I hope someone gets into difficulty. (gasps) Do you know what I mean, though? Yes, but you're not meant to say that out loud. That's the sort of stuff you you keep inside. Would would you be, like, trying to make someone drown? No, I don't want them to drown. You lob a float at their head. You're going to rescue them, so therefore everything will be fine. It's a bit like you, Joe, um, even with your nuanced view of rugby, you permanently being on the bench and never getting to go on. <laughs> yeah, quite I know exactly what, what that feels, and that would be fantastic. <laughs> the thing is, the role of the lifeguard is all about prevention. So you're trying to stop the accident or the situation before it happens. And that's why I think there's a real fine balance for lifeguards between like interacting with customers and doing it in a positive way because you want to make swimming and coming to a leisure center like a you know an enjoyable experience so that people come back and they do it again but equally you're the one with the whistle telling them all the things they can't do and if you remember like the old school signs that you used to get in swimming Huge pools fan. no petting no bombing that kind heavy of thing heavy petting i don't think it was heavy i think it was just no petting why why can't you pet in, in the pool? Well, apparently it's not appropriate according to like 1980s signage. Two, twofold here, pool. twofold. Why is it called petting? <laughs> yeah. Why is it called petting? Are you, stroke, are you stroking someone's hair? Like you might. Stroke. It's quite confusing, isn't it? Yeah. Like, what qualifies as petting? I don't know, but again, everyone kind of, of knows of what or... it means. Yeah. Um, well, I think it would be, I guess it's less in your face to like no tonguing or no fingering. <laughs> No fingering. Well, yeah. <laughs> and I don't think you could put that on a public sign. <laughs> it would look great in a graphic, wouldn't it? Because you know there's always a graphic for bombing where there's like a red circle with yeah. a line for it and someone and with their knees, knees to the up. chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you had some of the examples Joe's given there. No anal in the deep end. <laughs> or the shallow end. Like, why do you need to specify? Well, yeah, but... Yeah, just which, none in the pool. You're probably better off... Can you, uh, it oh. which, <laughs> what depth water has it become inappropriate? I don't want to get into Always it, inappropriate it is, in a public leisure facility. I would say that, that would lead to other issues in the pool, uh, which segues nicely onto, have you ever scooped uh, a poo out of the pool or had to? <laughs> Personally, yeah. no. You've ever, any, any, I've seen it done. Um, and there are sort of specific like equipment for scooping things out of the pool. Tell us more. Um, so, you know, a big, long pole with what is essentially just a giant spoon so that you can fish solid things out of the water because depending on the situation, you may or may not have to clear the pool because it might impact other people. So, so if it's from that perspective, bit, the more solid, the better. Out. Scoop it out, everyone carries on. But if you've got a total punami on your hands, <laughs> you, then you're just you're, there then on the mic, the pool. Um, Excuse me, we've got a code brown. There's a code brown. No, there's lots of codes in the leisure centres that all for the for lifeguards and for the staff that all mean different things so that they can. So there's react not a to code it. brown. But no, no. What's the poo one? No, there isn't a specific one <laughs> for that. You just shout poo. <laughs> there's a fucking shit storm going on, guys. Get down here. But is it quite hard? Sorry, Emma. Is it quite hard with the way you've described the poo scoop? 
it sounds almost like you're trying to play snooker on a full size table. I can imagine it being quite hard trying to reach this really like long handle. Yeah, I mean, you scoop it. That's the other thing is you want to hope it's near the side because otherwise you're going in the water to yeah. get it out, aren't you? And why would Tom, you want to do that when you know what's in there? Tom, you ever pooed in a swim pool? Was it ad- it adult, tends to be adult, children? It tends to be, it children, tends to be it? children. You've got to be yeah. really struggling if you're an adult and you can't, you're not capable of getting out of the pool. Obviously, the, there are occasions that that does happen, but. If you're a fully grown <laughs> adult and you can't get out of the swimming pool, mm, we're struggling there, so it's mainly kids. Have you ever shit yourself in the pool? <laughs> Not in memory. That was, a lo- that was yeah. too long a laugh to say then no. No, but you, as a kid, oh, here we go. I did piss in the pool as a kid. Let's say you were having your swimming lesson. Right, okay, you're and you right. didn't want to get out. You... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't ask me the question if you don't want the answer. No, I asked you about Have food. you ever shit in a pool? In a, uh, in a pool? Yeah. What? <laughs> Where else? That's a story, yeah. clearly. As what well. other, in the sea? No. Any other aquatic based poos? Did I shit in my fish bowl? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jacuzzi? No. Hot tub? No, I find it very difficult to shit in water. <laughs> I just think it's the pressure. Not, See, not my... the, as in, I think the actual pressure, like the. There's, there's something about the water. Like it's, they, they say you should get in water to help recovery because of the hyd- hydrostatic pressure, or so hydro pressure of the water or whatever. <laughs> and I think that has an effect on my anus. So you can't push a poo out, but women can give birth in pools. That's interesting. That is it? really interesting. Not something you need to know as a lifeguard. <laughs> no, but... don't think that is. Yeah. The question was, have you done a poo and thing and you openly admitted to weeing in a pool? As a younger, yeah. Yeah, just seven. When was the last time you weed in a swimming pool? <laughs> <laughs> we got on the back foot here, ever. Probably. Come on. Probably in 1982. Yeah. Not that convincing. Hey. I think it was more. I would, listen, if I'm swimming in the sea in my wetsuit, yeah, I would. Okay, so the sea is play on to piss. In your wetsuit? Yeah. Oh, Not well, sure about that. Warms you up. It's yeah, so nice. It stays in there for quite some time. Yes, but it is your piss rather than someone else's piss. Interesting. Mm. I did that. I did that as recent as a couple of months ago, in a wetsuit down at the wave. Mm. Um, very cold water, and I was dying. I was like, I was knackered. I couldn't get out. It was really, thing. and then I just did a wee in my wetsuit, and then it dawned on me. I went, but now it's just sitting here. It won't go away. So I was like trying everything I could to like <laughs> get rid of it, and then I started panicking about, well, can anyone see? That there's Did you have to here. take your wetsuit off in the water so that you didn't have an issue when you got out <laughs> with just where you going everywhere? Didn't go quite that far. <laughs> the panic was that have they put that dye in the? Is that a real thing? I've never experienced right. it, so I just think it's a myth. Even though I'm in the industry, I have no idea. Like <gasps> I, we, I think it's a myth. I don't. We don't. Do You've it. never seen it or never. No, but it. but still, even at my age, it's the kind of thing that even whether it's morally, ethically right to wee in the pool, it's still the main thing that stops you doing it. Because you're like, just in case, there's nothing. There'd be nothing more embarrassing. <laughs> Swimming down the lane, and it's yeah, mm, no. You'd have to swim past someone and then double back so it looked like they'd done it. Yeah. (laughs) Just trying to to picture weird in the pool, my local pool, and then going, right, how am I covering this up? I might just shout shark. (laughs) I'm like, ah, panic. Or pretend to start. No, that's it. A cramp. No, drown. I would pretend to start drowning. And then blame it on the lifeguard. No. (gasps) No. When the lifeguard comes in to rescue you. So I'd start oh. drowning and then be like, and then there'd obviously be a discussion over, in fact, no one would probably ask because they'd be like, oh, you were struggling and panicking and then I just... A little bit of weak over Yeah, I just wet myself. <laughs> that's fine, isn't it? So that's that's a myth. That's There's the myth gone on that one. So the rule is you can't wee in the pool, even though... No, you like... should absolutely go to the toilet before you get in the pool. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Don't eat directly before getting in the water because otherwise you know lifeguarding can be a really fun job but you don't want to be cleaning up things like that okay. you know do you shower joe before you go for a swim depends great answer thanks for the insight it depends whether i'm particularly dirty or not mm. so if i've if I've come off the training pitch and i've got mud on my knees or whatever i'll shower get rid of that if i've been up a couple of hours and i've just gone up the gym or I'm using the pool. I'll just jump in the pool. Is all that, sweaty. Is that all sweaty? Yeah. No. Why would I be sweaty? I've gone there and the first thing I've done was get in the pool. Why do I have to shower before? 
Do you have to shower before? You should shower before oh, you get right. in the pool. Yeah. I should have put him out of his misery, shouldn't I? I said <laughs> that when you were. Re- re- let's re say. Let's re say that. Yeah, I shower. I shower before getting in the pool. Always. Of course. Armpits. I do. Yeah. Everything. everything. Yeah, you, you should it. do. Otherwise, everything that's on your body and your hair is going in the pool for everyone else to get in their mouth. But there is a. Like a ton of chlorine in there, cleaning. Yeah, but we wouldn't out. need to use as much if everybody had a shower before they got in. Oh, okay. So we're going down the sort of save the world route. Yeah. But then you're using the water to shower. Mm, and it's all recycled in leisure centres. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think you can tell, Emma, if you're swimming, someone gets in the pool and they've not had a shower, as their body meets water, you often get a whiff of their deodorant, don't you? You get a sort of... You can smell the water washing something off them. Oh, that's interesting. I've never noticed, but then I think it's probably been a long time over the last few years that I've been that close to anybody in the pool to, yeah, I don't know. Where do you stand, Joe, on the uh, sh- on the swimming cap? I, I'm trying to work this one out because my kids do swim lessons at the school and they have to have caps. And I... When they ask, why do I have to wear a cap? Because fucking hell, they can be hard to get on. Oh, very hard, yeah. Maggie with loads of hair and I'm like ripping her hair out as I'm dragging it across do, her Do you know how to put it on properly? I should have brought a swimming hat with me. I could have shown you. I could have taught you how to put it on. Deadly. Go on. So they've got a line. You know, they're sort of flat. And yeah. The line down the middle. That should go over that way. A lot of people try and put them on I the do it side. Well. I thought so that went no, ear to ear. No, that line goes down the middle. So if you put that at the front of the head and then you whip it over, it'll, it'll go on. Right. Or the other trick which is a lot more fun, is turn it inside out, fill it with water, put it over the head, drop it, and it just goes over your head. Ooh. That's what I'm doing now. Yeah. Perfect. But when they asked asked me, what is the point of this hat, Daddy? I couldn't answer them. Oh, I can help you with that as well. What, why do you have to... Is it so your hair doesn't come out? It's, it's hygiene, for one. So, yeah, again, stops your hair from coming out, going in the water. Other people, can you imagine you're swimming? You get other Horrible. people's hair between your fingers <laughs> in your mouth. Oh, disgusting. Um, and also, in some cases, especially with swimming lessons, the colours usually denote what kind of level they're in. So certainly um, for the company I work for, we have like a traffic light system, so it's red, amber, green. So the red hats are always going to be your beginners. So all the swimming teachers and all the lifeguards right. know that they're beginners. It might be different where your kids go, but... Generally, it relates to the level of lesson that they're in. So it's a safety thing. And also, it's progression. Like, if the kids are moving up through different levels, they... <laughs> Don't scare her like that! <laughs> Steve just asked me to do it, Emma. I just realised right. I was going to ram you in the chin with the mic. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very off-putting. Yeah. No, it's a progression thing. So in some of our levels, we have um, bronze, silver, gold. The idea being that they'll progress through bronze, silver and gold and they want to stay until they've got the gold. So keeps the kids motivated, helps us retain them in the lessons. What We touched on chlorine. Is it just chlorine that's in that pool? Uh, it depends. And I am no expert on this. It's a long time since I've had my pool plant qualification. Pool plant? Yeah, that's an pool actual plant. qualification. What's a pool plant? Why is it? Pool, the pool, because it yeah. is the swimming pool. Yeah. And plant. the plant room is where all of the... Oh, right. Stuff, chemicals, the chemicals, stuff. the filters, all that kind right, of thing. Yeah. Um, so it's a pool plant qualification that you get so that you understand chlorine levels, pH levels, how to do pool testing and everything. Um, but as I say, I've forgotten more than I was taught on that. Um, but Tom, there are different filtrations. Have you, ever, have you ever been in a swimming pool that hasn't got chlorine? Yes. And is just relying on salt? Mm. Yeah, there's an amazing pool in Sydney, which is a saltwater pool. I think it's called the, what's it called? It's down by the dockyards in Wollongong, maybe. And it's amazing at swimming because obviously the salt keeps you buoyant. So you're sort of swimming in a different way because you're floating along. Is it just salt then? Or do they have salt and chlorine? No, and those ones are uh, just salt water. And just you get salt. some of the ones that are like the tidal pools. That There's mm. one down on the south coast um, in somewhere in Cornwall. Um, and it just fills up from the seawater. I was going to say I've been in I've been in a, a saltwater pool, and I found it more harmful than the fucking chlorine. What's well, stingy? Yeah, like, and in your eyes, you get mm. salt water in your mm. eyes. You're like, what the fuck? You're in the kids' pool as well, and you're like, this isn't working. You think it's better for the environment, but you're like, nah. Imagine putting a slug in there. A slug. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Imagine. 
<laughs> Have you ever faked a rescue to look cool? No. So at no, no point no, no. during your lifeguarding career did you ever go, um, excuse me, John, um, I'll give you uh, 20 quid. <laughs> when you get to the deep end, <laughs> just just start drowning. Uh, work's been a bit slow and I'm bored as fuck. Plus, I want to look really cool in front of everyone and I'll jump in and rescue. That's never happened. That has never happened to me. Mm. And I I don't know anyone else that's done that either. I think you missed a trick then. Yeah. What, <laughs> what about, have you ever dived in to save someone and then realised they're actually just a shit swimmer? They weren't drowning? No, but you do have to be very careful with that kind of thing. Um, of You have to really have a good look at some people to like watch what is their natural stroke before you make assumptions. So, yeah. And it's also really tempting because it can be a bit boring sitting on the chair when you're lifeguarding to want to sort of go, oh, if they just did that a bit different, their stroke would be so much better and that would be easier for them. So that's what adults swimming in lanes, yeah. you're sitting there, are you having to watch it the, enti the entire time? Yeah, yeah. Fuck me, but yeah. that could be like hours. Yeah. You're constantly no, well, to concentrate no, on that. It won't be hours in one go because you're only allowed to stay on poolside for a certain amount of time. So Is that for you because of your concentration? Yeah, yeah, it's totally happens. because of the concentration. So you do like a maximum of a 90-minute rotation. Mm -hmm. So you do 30 minutes. Say there's two pools, a teaching pool and a main pool. You might start on the teaching pool every point on the pool is named so you've got like a rotor a matrix that will have your pool position on and every half hour you switch and change round and once you've done your 90 minutes you go off pool side and you get to do something exciting like either have your lunch break for half an hour or clean the changing rooms Great. or something like that or set up equipment um I should make it sound more exciting, really, shouldn't I? <laughs> there's a lot of um, there's a lot of setting up and setting down of equipment because it's generally it's leisure centres with lots of other stuff going on. So if it's not lane ropes in the pool, it's you know badminton courts and and things like that as well. So it's a it's a varied day for a lifeguard, definitely. So when Emma, you're watching the lane swimming, mm. you're clearly a very good swimmer. Is it frustrating because you get some unbelievably bad swimmers, don't you? There's something about swimming because. Even if you get some form of momentum, you can just keep going up and down the pool in a way that you couldn't if you went for, I don't know, a bike ride or a run. Mm. Does it not get frustrating when you see terrible swimmers? It gets frustrating when you see people putting in a lot of effort, but they're not really getting anywhere. Like and a you flashy think, front crawl and the head's going sideways, the legs are going everywhere. Yeah, when, when there's a lot of splash going on and people's feet are kicking out of the water, like your feet need to be under the water and you need to be putting the effort in under the water because that's going to propel you. And I think probably worse for me because I was swimming teacher qualified as well, so I actually knew the technicalities of what they should be doing. But, um, yeah, it does, it does get frustrating. But within that sort of... 30 minutes or the 90 minute rotation you've got to be constantly like they call it scanning that's the what the um what the lifeguards have to do um so they have a certain amount of time that they scan the pool um and the zone that they're looking after because you might have more than one lifeguard on the same pool um and then that's where the 20 seconds comes in so a certain amount of time to scan the pool and then the 20 seconds to react and that reaction might be you know just going and shouting to them or passing them a throw rope or something. Ideally, you don't want to get in the water. You're trying to prevent getting in the water. Just listen to that. I, I've definitely taken lifeguards for granted all these years. Like how intense you actually have to be on the money in case someone's drowning. Yeah. Like how quickly can someone get into trouble? Very quickly. And I mean, it depends on the circumstances. My my first rescue, which was a very long time ago, but was um, I, I wasn't I was shadowing another lifeguard because it was my first week of when I'd done my qualification. I'd first started summer holidays, inflatable session in the pool, Chaos. all the kids, absolute mayhem. In theory, the kids are supposed to get on at one end, run along the inflatable, slide off the other end, climb out go and join the queue in theory never works like that <laughs> everyone's climbing all uh, you know and that's the lifeguard's role in that in that uh, sense is to sort of keep everybody doing what they should be and you know hopefully they're having fun um but what actually happened was the lifeguard that I was shadowing so just watching what she was doing and getting to understand it she um 
somebody went, uh, a teenager went across the inflatable, slid off the end, couldn't swim. So they've got on it in shallow water, went off the slide at the end, couldn't swim, deep water, went under. Um, and that was like instantaneous and shouting to him. He was just going under the water, so he wasn't going to get himself out. So she went in to get him out. Um, and he, you know, people are going to panic when they're in that situation. He was climbing all over her, trying to get himself out of the water so that he could breathe. Um, so I actually ended up going in to help her out because she was getting pushed under the water. But they do teach you, one of the things they teach you in your lifeguarding course is how to like push people away. Um, because obviously you've got to look after yourself first before, you know, before anyone else. As in push, push them away to be like, you're a lost cause. Not you're a lost, it's not you're a lost cause, but push them away and I'm not going to help you until you calm down. Oh, you know? I yeah, thought yeah, you yeah. were like, you've got to learn to just fuck them off. <laughs> you've got to save yourself first and foremost. No, but if they're pushing you under, you're going to push them away until and then go you can, and then go back and then yeah or make them turn around so that they've got their back to you because then you can get your hand under their chin and and pull them out that must be hard though like joe if you were drowning you're not going to just turn onto your back and just lie there waiting to be towed ashore no. are you? well no the panic sets in doesn't it so you start scrambling even more and the more you scramble the more you, you sink so like, well, i'm sure we're meant to float in water why the fuck am i sinking why do you sink <laughs> You asking a technical question? That is, yeah. <laughs> Why do I sink? Do you need some swimming lessons? I can't swim. I genuinely, I can't. can't. Really? No. Never too late to learn, you know. Uh, what I'm interested to know: what percentage of the population do you think can't swim? Do you think there's more people that can't swim than there is that can? That's a great shout. We should probably Google it. I thought you had the answer to hand, sorry. But Wait, you really one, one in three adults in England can't swim. Can't swim? Yeah, over one 14 in three million adults, adults really? that can't swim. Yeah. Has yeah. that gone up because people are getting lazier or not getting in the pool as much or not Expensive. exercising as much? Expensive. Expensive. Yeah, well, it, it used to be one in five and it's now one in three. So, yes, it has gone up. Um and I think there's lots of reasons for that. Um, and I think there's a lot to be done in like promoting swimming as a as an activity and all the benefits of it as well. But, you know, lifeguarding is just one of the benefits of it. You know, learning to swim can lead to a career, but ultimately swimming's the only, I know it's a bit serious, but swimming's the only sport that's going to save your life, isn't it? If you've got into difficulty in the water. But it's why we've put, we hired out um, the pool that the kids have all learned to swim in. It's at someone's else, so you can hire it out for that. So we hired it out, and we've got four kids. Yeah. So Maggie and Jasper, the two eldest, six and eight, all done the lessons, both capable swimmers. And then Felix and Pixie were in the change rooms, me, me and Daisy. And I said to Jasper and Maggie, right, just you can wait outside the change room, but don't get in yet until mummy mm. and daddy are coming in. And so we're changing, getting them two ready. I can hear Jasper like, chatting away or something and then it just went eerily silent and it's something in that daisy was just like just have a quick check looked out there i saw maggie struggling no. in the middle of the pool being dragged down just by herself by panicking yeah and immediately i was like fuck jumped in picked her up it was luckily shallow for me but deep for her yeah and got her on the side she's all sh shaken up and like shitting herself and sit then we were in the pool for the rest of it she was just so scared and shook up by that experience we've now started taking her to more lessons after school getting the confidence, Get confidence back back. because yeah ultimately it it can be a sport it can be a career but like you've just said it's it's about safety and actually in being able to go on holiday jump in the pool knowing that you've got the ability to not die in it yeah. That's that's essentially what it's about, rather than relying on people like you to jump in mm. and, and help me, um, and which sad... makes me so embarrassed that I still can't swim. But sadly, I think um, drowning is one of the biggest causes of like accidental death in, in the UK. Um, 
And so like last week was Drowning Prevention Week in the UK. Um, and there's a big push on water safety. Every time the sun comes out, you'll see all the messages around, you know, people are obviously going to want to jump in every body of water they can find. But, you know, there's a there's a fun side to that, but there is a there's a serious and sad side to it as well. And, you know, all kids should have the opportunity to learn to swim. Um, and swimming is in the national curriculum as well. So, but it's not you know, because of COVID, because of the pool closures that we've had. Um, they're, they're predicting the millions of children in the next five years that there's like a lost generation of kids that won't have learned to swim because of the pool closures. Um, so, yeah, it, 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 is a real, it is a real challenge. If you, Joe, were to get swimming lessons from Emma, you've got the classic four strokes to choose from. Which would you like to become extremely good at? I would like to... There's four strokes. So I'll give you front crawl, a.k.a. Yeah. freestyle. Backstroke. Backstroke. Breaststroke. Breaststroke. Butterfly. Butterfly. Butterfly? What? Why do I need to be good at butterfly? It looks amazing. For sport, but <laughs> when on earth are you going to choose that leisurely thing? Right, I'm getting in the sea today, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do an hour of butterfly. When are you ever doing that unless you're doing it for sport? That's not like... I want breast. In general, or no bre- breaststroke? Up. I want breaststroke. Although, do you, it, you need to do, Joe? Why is it put breaststroke? Your fingers together. Put my fingers together. Yeah, because if you swim with your fingers like that, the water's just going through the middle of them. Where if you swim with your fingers together, yes. But you... Emma, how do you know that I didn't have these special web gloves on? And that I was just <laughs> well. If you did, then that's <laughs> absolutely fine. <laughs> okay, so hands together. I haven't got like the shoulder range really for the backstroke or the. Front crawl, I don't think. I think that's half my problem. Do you put if for breaststroke, will you put your face in? No. You keep your face out. Oh, you need to put your face in. You put your face well, in. Well, it's going to hurt your neck and your back otherwise. Yeah, but then you you're underwater and you can't breathe underwater. No, but you're breathing every stroke. So every time you pull your arms, you lift your chin up to breathe. <gasps> and then when your arms go out straight again, you're that's it. Putting your hands down. No. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Nice. Nice. <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you make me do these things? Oh, What's your leg kick like? Just push yourself slightly further back from the table. We can see your leg kick. Emma, can you just give us a technical um, critique of Joe's leg kick, please, as he does his breaststroke legs? Just standing up now. And he's going to try and do it one legged. I thought you were going to stay sitting in your chair and do it that way, but if you want to lay, lay across the floor and do it, that's fine. Okay, so Joe's just lying down the floor. He's so nimble, he gets down so quickly. Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I think he's going to take out the equipment. I don't think he's going to get like, as wide a kick as he needs. That's as what... <laughs> it looks a bit like you're What's a free-falling you parachutist. Would, yeah, it does. At least he's got his head the down there. So can I just do this one? So can you do front crawl legs and breaststroke top? Well, not if you want to be doing a proper stroke, but, you know, whatever works for you and whatever you enjoy. What's the best one for survival? <laughs> oh, on your paddle. back with your head up out of the water because you're going to lose most of your heat through your head. Oh, so maybe I should... Cho- maybe I'll choose... I'm oh, knackered. <laughs> maybe I'll choose a uh, backstroke then. Can I Can I choose backstroke? Of course you can. All right, Emma, make me a world-class... Who's the best backstroker in the world? Make me them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever saved someone that like you just spoke there that you've mm. learned this push away technique because you've given up on them they're, they're a lost hope you need to go and save yourself which is interesting for a lifeguard um, you just fucked it off but have you ever saved someone that or that looked like they're in distress you jump in and they've turned around and said what the fuck are you doing this is my techers this is this is how I swim they just Look like they're drowning, but they're absolutely fine. No, I think I have. I've not actually jumped in and done that. I've asked someone if they're okay, like thinking they've got cramp or something like that, and they're like, "No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine." Why? That's yeah. just their weird yeah. swimming technique. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and some people make some really strange noises when they're swimming as well. When they sort of expel their air, there, there's some very strange techniques of swimming out there, and especially when you get the people that come in regularly and you start to recognise them, you know. It's, yeah, really strange. What about lane rage? So, Joe, you consider me a, a calm individual most of the time? 
No. I've, I've led you slightly with that question. Is lane rage a real thing then? No. Do people get pissed off with it? It is. And I, I think that probably lifeguards have to deal with more of that than they do rescues really? because, yeah, people get really feisty. Really feisty. What's your policy? Do you get involved? Because it's a bit of a bet noir for me. If I'm, let's say I'm in. A what? It's a bit of a bugbear for me. If I'm in the fast lane and someone from the slow lane comes in the fast lane because there's less people mm. and they start drifting slowly down it because I'm very British I find it impossible just to say to them D would you mind going in that lane and I'm sort of looking at the lifeguard as if to say come on you're the policeman here yeah yeah and it, and it is the role of the lifeguard to get involved in that situation and put the people in the correct lanes and suggest that they move over but the lane rage is either going to come from you because you're annoyed because it's get someone's in the way of your swimming or the person that I've just gone up to and said would you mind moving over what are you saying I'm slow Sort of, mm, I am, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about people? This is a, again another thing which has wound me up, Emma, in the past, where someone is, they've immersed themselves, they've gone for a swim, so they've immersed themselves in a large body of water up to their neck, but they decide they want to keep their hair dry. Mm. So when you swim past them, giving it a bit of on the legs, they get really arsy because they've now got wet hair. They're in a swimming pool. That's what I feel. Yeah, I mean, that's what I personally feel. They're in a swimming pool. Um, you're going to get wet, aren't you? You'd think so. It's perfectly summed that up for me. Mm. Um, what? And they, sh they should have had a shower before they got in anyway. That's, that's a fair point. Uh, is that a written rule or is that just like... It's guidance. It's a guidance. Oh, yeah, well, it's hygiene guidance. You know what Boris thought of guidance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Piece of shit. Going from a pool lifeguard to sea lifeguarding, mm -hmm. what sort of... Extra <laughs> you obviously need to know a little bit more, probably about... Sharks <laughs> and seals, the, dang <laughs> the, the dangers that they bring. Uh, I think you can is, probably find more plastic and you know, shopping other, trolleys. Is there in any the other UK, extra but... training that you have to do from going to pool to sea? Yeah, they're different qualifications. So the lifeguarding qualification is four or five days with a practical exam at the end of it. Um, and, they, you know, you have to be able to do like timed swims and rescues and things like that. So you've got to be decent swimming ability. And it's all the first aid training and stuff that you do as well. So you learn how to use a defib and do the first aid training. And then with the like open water and beach lifeguards, it's additional qualifications that you have to do. So, you know, you recognize all the beach flags and you understand the tides and things like that. So nothing to do with sharks or seals? I, I don't think so. But well, you, kn you know seals are twats, don't you? Are they worse than swans? Because we were talking about swans earlier. So I've never encountered a seal in the water. Oh, my goodness me. They are so scary. I've seen two now. Just popping up. Can't they? work out whether they're the same one or whether it's two separate ones. <laughs> what did the first one look like? The second one. <laughs> what did the second one look like? The first one. King hell. Maybe they were brothers. Very similar. <laughs> or sisters. <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't tell. Just siblings. The head just pops up and they're all fucking like that. Scary as shit. What were the eyes like? Like their head, but smaller. <laughs> so like there were small versions of their head just popping out yeah. of their eyes. How close were they? Uh, I think as close as 15 foot. Yeah. How far is that? That's 15 foot. Do you, could you have a seal if you had to? As in give birth to one? No. <laughs> let's say it was you. Let's say I you could have it. A seal came for you yeah. when you're bobbing about. Yeah. Life or death, who's winning? Yeah, but I'm pretty sure I wouldn't engage in that because... He started it. She started it. The no, seal started it. Gookie Boy, my favourite, the marine biologist, told me that you can catch chlamydia off a seal. Or did I tell him that? <laughs> Was that a specific seal you'd met? <laughs> <laughs> that is outrageous talk <laughs> this fucking day and age, Tom. Uh Yeah, I wouldn't engage in that out of fear of then having to explain why I've got chlamydia. But he's, he's attached my wife. You. The seal is attached to you. Yeah. You've got no choice. Yeah, I'm beating fuck out that seal. Yeah, you reckon you yeah, could? I, only if it's in water that I can stand up in. If he if he takes me out a bit deeper, fucking he's winning nine times out of ten. Because there's that one chance that he might just fit in and let me swim back or doggy paddle back. But if, <laughs> if I can touch the floor and maybe reach for my knife or... You carry a knife when you go swimming? I do now. Uh, what? Yeah. Every Sunday I head down there with my uh, my water boots, my gloves and my knife. A diver's knife strapped to the thigh? No, it's a machete. Is it? That's, good. That's sounding like some weird James Bond <laughs> stepping out of the water with the, yeah. Uh, 
it's the first time I've been compared to James Bond <laughs> stepping out of the water with a machete. <laughs> I'd actually like to get that image of me coming out of the water. <laughs> with your boots and your gloves on. Yeah. yeah. Hey, how you doing? My name Pony. <laughs> My name Sorry. Hello. I'm Joe Marler. From the Joe Marler Show. We now do socks that you can also wear on your hands, apparently. And the cool thing about these socks are not only are they jazzy and got my face on them for some ridiculous reason. Uh, stand for socks. Every pair you buy of the Joe Marler Show socks will then donate a pair of warm antibacterial ones to someone who desperately needs them. So go on, go buy some. Not sure why he's thrown a pair at me. If you, if, you, if, you, if you buy them, they won't. They will come in the post in a normal way, and they won't be thrown at you. Stay classy. Where insert the place that you live at now. <laughs> Hit the link below if you want a pair of socks that you can then pretend to be a cat and lick yourself. We're coming out of the break with a question from Tom. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> I tell you what I want to ask Emma. Right, if you go swimming in swimming pools in different countries, different rules seem to exist. So let's say you go swimming in France. You've got to wear a swimming cap. You can't wear the board shorts. You have to wear either the skimpy thong or the jammer. Right? Have they got the right idea or have we got the right idea? I think the the hats is very much like a hygiene thing in Europe, definitely. Um, the swimwear, do you, why do you want to put barriers in the way of people coming swimming? You know, you want to feel comfortable when you're in there and, you and know. You, you've actually got to allow them to actually get in it rather than yeah. <laughs> put him <laughs> putting like a fence up. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, why would you, why would you like tell people exactly what they've got to wear? So it means they've got to go out and buy something different. You just right? want people to swim. Just, we just if, want... if that was the case, then you shouldn't be moaning about hats and any swimwear. We should just be swimming and how we were built to swim and what I do every Sunday and just go in there naked. It's not, it's not really what everyone else wants to see. Not you personally, <laughs> but just in general. See, the seal's not moaning. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. He's coming up to complain. Well, the, there was no sound from him. How would a seal complain? <laughs> Put your dick away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the sight of your dick. <laughs> In the, water. the singing seal. <laughs> <laughs> it's that magical singing seal <laughs> on the Eastbourne seafront. Fuck. No, that's a very good point. You don't want to. Uh, there shouldn't be a rule to stop you doing something that is probably something everyone does at one point in their life, whether mm. it's on holiday or at a party, or you need to. So, where do the rules come in then, Joe? Because I've been in a swimming pool in France, Emma, where. It looks like it's set out like a pool here where you've got slow, medium, fast lane. Except in France, they don't seem to be bothered about that. They'll just all swim wherever they want to swim. Mm. So you'll have someone drifting sli sideways on the current in the fast lane. I remember one swimming pool in France where it was a nice two-metre depth, so it's a nice pool, and it's all going off in the fast lane. There's backstroke, there's breaststroke, there's side stroke. And as I'm trying to do my front crawl, I glance down, and my eye is distracted by something on the bottom of the pool. It's a bloke going underneath me with an aqua lung. And flippers. <laughs> and what? <laughs> the pool. An aqua lung? Yeah. What's an aqua lung? Like an air tank on his back. Yeah, so you wouldn't be able to do that in, in the UK. Absolutely not. Why? We've just we've literally just said we shouldn't put barriers no, up. You, you and if I want to go swimming in my local pool, which is only 10 by 10. <laughs> fucking hell, that, that's a that's weird state small. pool. Yeah. Mm. Which is only... Name a different pool size. 25 metres. 25 metres. If I want to go swimming in my local 25 metre pool <laughs> and I've got an aqua lug that I want to try out, I want to fucking try that out. We said with no barriers, but that's not allowed over here, no? Well, for your own safety and for everyone else in the pool, it's the flippers that are going to do the damage. If you're swimming uh, along and you, you know, you've know, you got flippers on, that's you, someone else is potentially going to get hurt. So, yeah, it's a fine line between, you're quite right, a real balance of wear what you want, we don't want to stop you coming in, versus we want to keep you and everyone else safe whilst you're in here as well. Um, but, yeah, there's some very strange swimming pool etiquette around the world. In um, Iceland, 
you ha- or everybody showers naked before you get in and you have to it's like a rule it's a policy it's on the signage when you go in and it even like shows you where to wash so it like it, as in it, the area as in, or as in the it part will, of your body yeah the part of your body like you need to wash here you know like it, it has it all on the picture and there's places for you to leave your swimming stuff so literally the last thing you do is put your swimsuit on before you then go into the pool because they want you to be absolutely clean before you get in the water and I think that's a real strange one because over here people go in cubicles if you're in a communal area everybody keeps their swimwear on so when you're not used to it that's a bit of a shock you know those you know those things that dry your shorts yeah the costume or your costume yeah um they go fucking really quick don't Mm -hmm. they like they're f- incredible. Mm. Always pisses me off when they're out of service. You know, you get there, you put it in, it doesn't go, and you're like, yeah. it doesn't work. Where can I pick one of them up from then? <laughs> uh, is there, are they? Well, you're just going to go in, you want, do you want a name of a leisure centre? Are you going to take it off the wall or are you wanting to actually I mean, if there's one? a chance of that happening, <laughs> if you know of any like security loopholes, then that's fine. But can <laughs> can you buy them for residential homes or? I imagine you must be able to. Oh, I would okay. have thought so. So it's doable. Well, it's no different than a leisure centre buying one, I don't I mean, it's, you, you could have a tumble dryer. Yeah, or a washing machine or washing line. No, no, you couldn't. They don't, because there's no way our tumble dryer or washing machine spins as fast as them. Do you like the fact that it's the push down with a hand that does it as well? Yeah. Yeah. Fucking hell, it's just so much fun. I'll be there for ages. I'll be asking everyone, guess yours, I'll do it for you. <laughs> yeah. And get slightly weird <laughs> looks. Yeah. I've snuck into the women's changing room and then I'm, I'm, this is literally not pervy in the slightest. It's just I'm here to dry your costumes because I'm obsessed with I'm it. I'm here to dry your costumes. <laughs> <laughs> A reassuring comment. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake, this is chaos. <laughs> Can I ask a question about swim strokes, Emma? Because you're obviously a swimming teacher as well. Yeah. Why have we why have we not invented a new one for a long time? Do you know, I've no idea. It's probably just because we've been teaching the same stuff over and over again. Because they've all started somewhere. They must have done, yeah. And they've all, you know, different thing different strokes have morphed out of different ones. So you have like there's a stroke called life saving backstroke, which is not something that, you know, you're gonna compete in the Olympics at, but it's like a double armed <gasps> and a breaststroke leg on your back. Now that is a good one for swimming outdoors. So you know when you said when you were on the floor, can yeah. I not do legs of one on the arms of the other? That's what you can do. So you know, there are some that have morphed in and out of each other, but... How much more could you actually invent, Tom? So That's... I'm thinking about something I'm going to call the corkscrew. Go on. Where you would basically corkscrew the water by sort of turning over on your back and then your front. You just stay in one place. <laughs> you have to move your legs. You ca- So what? you're kicking your legs like yeah. a front core kick. I think so. Maybe you could use your hands to get the initial propulsion. And then you're just... Could that yeah. work or not? Oh, I don't know. Well, I think you need some kind of forward propulsion with your arms. So. Yeah, you need one of those sea cats mm. that you hold. You know, the thing that you have underwater yeah. and it just... <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> you need like a propeller. <laughs> yeah. You can, so that's not actually swimming, mate. That's water sports. Okay, what else could you do with your legs? Because you've got the classic um, freestyle kick, mm. same as the... as the. Um, then you've got the frog legs. Yeah. Bend, yeah. open, snap. <laughs> yeah. Bend, open, snap. Bend, open, snap. Sorry. Are you remembering that from your own swimming lessons <laughs> or from your kids? It sounds like my it's kids, ingrained. It's my yeah. kids at the minute. Yeah. It's, it's quite, uh, wheels on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> kick, 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 kick. Reach. Swim. Hold on. Swim. Hold on. <laughs> oh my. Help me. <laughs> right, I'm going to go back to that kicking thing because there's a weird anomaly about swimming, Emma, where, so in elite competitions where, let's say you're doing back straight, you've got to come up at a certain point. You can't do the whole length underwater, can you? Because it's faster underwater. Mm. Yeah, you, you what? Only... It's weird, isn't it? You have to come up. Yeah, you do. On breaststroke, you have to come up at a certain point. So they'll swim like a full, I think it's a, a full... Um, no, it's the metres, and it's also about the amount of the stroke that you're allowed oh. to do. So it's like a pull and a kick, um, and then you have to you have to come, come up. up. Yeah, but again, too much underwater swimming, holding your breath, all that kind of thing. Not Can good. Be for dangerous. You. No. Did you see? Actually, was it last week? There was um, an American artistic swimmer, synchronized swimmer, yeah. who was competing in some sort of 
I don't know, European World Championships, not sure which one it was, got to the end of her routine, fainted. Obviously, it's like elite competition. Her coach had to dive in and pull her out. There's footage of it online. It's quite scary. It is quite scary. So, you know, she's obviously at the peak of her fitness um, and really, really good. And uh, what she's doing, spends all her time in the water, but for whatever reason, um, you know, passed out underwater. So don't hold your breath then? No. you No. And when you're swimming and when we teach swimming, you shouldn't hold your breath. You should blow out when you're underwater. So you're always exhaling. But if you hold your breath for too long underwater, you can pass out and if you're swimming underwater and you pass out it's not like you're going to come up and splash around you're just going to sink so yeah it can be really scary so these lifeguards important yeah here's a question about swimming pools so if what's a, a sort of an average temperature for the water temperature 17 18 or a bit warmer oh it depends um which pool it is but if it's like a fitness swimming pool it'll be um like 27 degrees and 27 whereas if it's a like teaching pool for little ones where you've got baby lessons and they're not, you know, little ones that aren't moving around so much. It's more like 30. So how come, let's say Joe was swimming in a, in a, in a swimming pool, and it's 27 degrees. How come Joe would probably feel colder in that water than if it was 27 degrees of air temperature and he was outside? Because it's about the difference between the air temperature and the water temperature. So in a leisure centre, they try and keep the air temperature like within a degree of the water temperature because otherwise you're going to feel the... It's always fucking hot and sticky and moist. Mm. I I just thought that was because people were in there, like breathing and stuff, but that they keep that temperature like that for that reason. Yeah. Oh. And humidity and stuff like that. Yeah, it's very moist in leisure centres, isn't it? I quite like it. Yeah. (laughs) This, it's just descended into chaos. It we descended going, very quickly today. We were, di- we were good so well. <laughs> How good are you? <laughs> I got none left. Haven't you? Have them. we missed any other ones off? <laughs> oh, here's one. Okay, so this is my last question, Emma, um, because when you have a swim in a swimming pool, this is maybe the last thing you do before you exit the leisure centre and you walk past the vending machines. Mm. Yeah. Why do you feel so hungry after swimming? Let's say you've burnt, I don't know, 500 calories with your swim. You seem to be hungrier after a swim than if you burn 500 calories going for a run or a bike ride. I completely agree. I don't know why, but I do agree. And it doesn't matter if you swim for five minutes or an hour, you're still going to come out feeling starving. But what I would say is they've also gone all healthy with the like vending machine. So what used to be the you know kind of pop and packet of... Quavers or whatever, you know, what's it, things like that. It's full of all, you know, it's full of healthy stuff these days. But a lot of people who swim outdoors are renowned for eating cake as well because the two things go hand in hand. If you can swim, you're definitely coming out hungry. You're a bit cold, coffee, tea, cake. So, yeah, I, I just think that swimming for some reason just naturally makes you hungry, definitely. You kind of use quite a lot of your body, don't you? Mm. to do it like you're using nearly every part of your body to stay afloat in that water so it's probably just knacking you out what's your snack of choice post bobbing around in the sea um we usually stop at famous golden arches and get a (laughs) bacon and egg but muffin (laughs) and a coffee and if you're walking past a vending machine what are you going for oh i really like munchies Oh, yeah. You know, the uh, the square thing. Yeah. The, mm. Do they still do them as well? I think so. Red uh, packet. Sparkling water. I love you? a sparkling do water. You? Oh, I love it, mate. I love it so hard. One of my favourite things that I've ever done in my entire life is go to Buell Water down near me. It's like a bit of water. <laughs> I'm trying to think of it. Is it lake? I think it's a lake. Something tells me that it's a reservoir. Would I be allowed in there if... Possibly, yeah, there are reservoirs that you can swim in. Oh, so there's this giant inflatable mm. assault course that you go, it's in the middle of it, and there's this massive iceberg as well, Yeah, inflatable iceberg that you can climb up and jump off. And I love it. I went with Jasper, and uh, I love it, A, because I've got a life jacket on, so guaranteed not to, well, not guaranteed, but there's a strong chance I won't die that day. 
and normal Jasper because he's fine. Although there was a moment where I put him on the end of that pillow. You know, you can put a pillow and then you jump on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I put him right on the sweet spot. <laughs> and I thought, fuck it, he's good. I'm giving him some here. I'm giving him some. And I did the most perfect jump, one of the best jumps I've ever done in my entire life. And the shriek that came out of the couple stood behind me, <laughs> not Jasper, stood behind me of how high he went. <laughs> They were like, what the fuck has gone on there? I went, oh, he'll be fine. <laughs> and then as I, because it's all queued up, as I like went to get off, they were like looking at me as if, are we doing you? <laughs> like, <laughs> and I went, no, no, don't worry. So I then just <laughs> slipped off and then went and found Jasper, which is about 20 metres away. Anyway, the point I'm asking is, what I noticed was there was only about, I'd say three lifeguards around there but there was about at least 40 kids mm. at least 40 kids surely that must be so hard to to stay concentrated and keep your eye on, especially with a load of kids running around and yeah yeah i think it is and every activity in a pool or lake or reservoir or whatever is always risk assessed so they know they make a decision about what the capacity of the session is so you know how many lifeguards you need for it um so and and it's about blind spots as well when you're lifeguarding so some of those i know what you mean by the iceberg and the pillow and everything some of those pieces of equipment are massive um but also you have to have a certain depth of water because if you're going to do what you did to jasper he's going to go up but then when he hits the water he's going to go under as well um so like the iceberg i know has to have five meters of water underneath it fucking hell it's that deep it must have been, yeah. Oh, my but God. The, the yeah, but it's all murky, so I couldn't tell. It's see. just covered in goose shit. If, if it was going in a pool, that's, you know, what we would have yeah. to do. Um, but with the buoyancy aids or the life jackets that you're wearing, that obviously reduces the risk. So, you know, where I was talking earlier about taking 20 seconds to get in and, you know, if people are wearing buoyancy aids, then it's lower risk. So that's what the kind of ratios and things are based on is the risk of the activity. But... It's a bit more interesting and exciting if you're if you're watching that, but obviously the risk of the activity is higher. Is there any ever was there any ever part of you that was like, oh fuck this, I want to get in, I want to go climb that. Oh uh, well, some I want to go climb that iceberg and yeah. do it myself. Yeah, some of those things have like lifeguard positions in the middle of them, Ooh. so you see the ones in the lakes and stuff, and they'll have one. But I'm not sure. Like that sounds really fun, but if you've got 40, 50 kids running <laughs> all over it, you know, I'm I'm not sure. But yeah, we had a massive inflatable setup in one of the pools. Well, we've got like slides going off the diving boards and things oh, like that. Off the diving boards. Yeah, at the aquatic centre in London on the Ooh. Olympic Park. So off the ten meter board. Not the ten meter, the five. Jesus the five, Christ, yeah. Tom. That's why I asked. We've said a lot about safety and water, and you want to fucking slide off the ten meter diving board? Yes, please. Oh, okay. But yeah, everyone likes to like all the elite swimmers and divers and everybody. Everyone wants to get in and have a go on them. And you know, when we did, people got in and had a go. GoPro cameras and everything, so you can see the going down the slides and running across all the equipment. It's a lot of fun. Is where's that at the Olympic? At the Olympic Pool in the in uh, yeah in Stratford on the Olympic Park. I'm guessing that's the one that was used in the London 2012 games. Yeah, the Olympics. The yeah. Olympics. Yeah, and it was still. And it's, is it a big one? Fifty meters. Fucking hell, that's like double. Yeah, three meters deep. Twenty-five meter pool. It's <laughs> 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 <was> fucking massive. <laughs> Christ, imagine doing that. I'd, I'd die. How deep is it? Three meters deep. Is, is it? D- is it? Is it the same depth? Is it the same depth throughout? It is, unless does you it move do the floor. Move that one, the floor. That one is three meters deep throughout, but you can. There's parts of it you can move the floor up and down. Yeah. So movable floors in a swimming pool is a thing. So the diving pools often have movable floors. You can put the floor up to teach swimming lessons. Put the floor down to use it as a diving pool. Fucking hell! That must take a hell. Of, where's the water go then? Underneath. Does it? Yeah. Hang on. I never even thought about where the water would go. So it floats, basically. Oh. It's on hydraulics, but it floats, yeah. We're just completely (laughs) dumbfounded by that. We're like, what the fuck? Yeah, there you go. The water goes underneath. There's your fact for the day. Obviously it does, because I I thought the same. I went, where's that water go then? Does it just spill over the the top and then you refill it once it goes back down? 
yeah. So there's clever stuff they do with these pools. Like that 50 metre pool at the aquatic centre, you can actually split it into three separate pools. It's got a boom that's on mm. the floor that comes up and then it's got a boom at one end that you can move down. So if you put that one up and move that one down, you've then got three 25 metre pools because it's a 10 lane wide. So, yeah. I love it. Uh, you got any others, Tom? That's all my questions. This is uh, This has been... Absolutely fucking mental. <laughs> <laughs> this has been brilliant. Thank you, Emma, for coming on and talking all things lifeguarding. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you.